The Blood Warden, a horrifying mob with a terrifying temper. This beast is more powerful than any other. Being the first warden to leave the deep dark has allowed it to spread its evil across the world. Born from a blood witch's curse, this monster still seeks its revenge. Once a normal warden who was outcast for not having any sonic boom powers, he stumbled upon a witch hidden in the deep dark. Terrified, the witch made an offer of eternal power to the warden. Drink from this pool of blood and you will feel the power. The warden made the choice to drink. As he did this, he began to feel his heart race. His skin turned a blood red and his mouth twisted into a toothy smile. An intense feeling of pain flowed through his body. As this pain settled, the warden came out of a daze only to realize that he could now see. This new experience scared and angered him. His mind became clouded, and the only thing he could think of was revenge. He immediately ran towards the ancient city, remembering his past. Throughout all his life, he was picked on by the other wardens. He was born different, and they never let him forget that. But now, that was all going to change. He reached the ancient city and let out an angry roar, summoning all the wardens to the city square. They were all confused to sense a bloody warden standing in front of them. But this confusion was all they had time for. You've all hurt me for the last time. Suddenly, his chest exploded open, sending out a bloody sonic boom. In a horrific display, all the other wardens were instantly reduced to pools of dark blood. This substance then began to soak into the surrounding skulk, changing it and the soul fire's colors. Settling out of his rage, the Blood Warden glanced around in confusion. Why could he see? Where were the other Wardens? Why did the Skulk seem different? Not quite sure what had happened, and unsettled by these changes, he decided to leave the city. While venturing through the caves, the Blood Warden walked past a patch of Skulk. He heard a noise, and to his surprise, the Red Skulk opened up a hole in the cave wall. This was unusual. Normally, Skulk would close up around any warden that attempted to leave its influence. But now, it almost seemed as if it wanted him to leave. Curiosity filled the Blood Warden as he passed through, not knowing what lay in wait for him on the other side. He traversed the caves for hours and hours before something eventually caught his eye. There was a light coming from the end of the tunnel. He ran over and suddenly found himself blinded by the harsh rays of the sun. He couldn't see and was surrounded by loud noises from every direction. This scared the warden and caused him to go into a rampage, attacking each new noise he heard. He killed everything in his path and destroyed the first village he came across. As he was about to kill the last villager, his sight returned to him. The blood warden stopped and stared at the villager. You are no monster. I can't believe I was about to murder you. As he said this, he was hit by a vision of what he had done to his fellow wardens. Horror filled his very soul. He looked down at himself and realized that he was completely covered in blood. What have I become? His fear turned to anger at the witch who had made him this way. If it hadn't been for her evil magic, he wouldn't have done these horrible things. While lost in thought, the Blood Warden heard a cry for help. He shook off his rage and decided to investigate. As he made his way into a clearing, he saw a player being bullied by another in armor. He was being made fun of and forced to hand over his valuables. Still feeling guilty for what he had done and relating to the player's situation, the Blood Warden decided to help him and let out a bloody sonic boom, turning the bully into a red mist. The player was in awe. The Blood Warden said nothing and began to walk away before being stopped by the player. You look like you could use a friend. The name's Adam. If you stick with me, we will be unstoppable. He was hesitant at first. Ultimately, the Warden agreed to travel with the player in order to learn more about this new world. However, he could not predict what was yet to come. At first, it was simple mining and crafting, but before long, the player was showing the Blood Warden every corner of the world. The more time that passed, the more adventures they would go on together, and the stronger their bond would become. The Blood Warden would use his abilities to aid Adam in combat, while Adam supplied him with food, shelter, and friendship. The duo would raid lost temples and roam the nights, defeating every mob they came across. They were truly unstoppable. Before long, the Warden found himself attacking other players while Adam took their valuables. Adam would always tell him that they were his enemy, but he began to wonder if he was doing the right thing. 
This all came to a head one day when they left a group of defenseless players for dead and their houses in flames. A realization struck the warden. Had they become the bullies? He looked over at Adam and saw him collecting the last of the looted wealth. The player noticed the warden staring at him and could sense his growing doubts. Uh, don't think too much about it, okay? Their worth was stolen from the others. They deserved this. Not wanting to question his only friend, the Blood Warden listened, not realizing that his questions had terrible answers. One day, the player and Warden entered a village. Abruptly, Adam motioned the Warden towards the town's Iron Golem. You see that thing? That monster's been terrorizing this village for weeks. Think you're strong enough to take it? The Blood Warden confidently nodded his head. Rushing the Golem, he took it out in an instant. Turning back around, he noticed that the player had left. Confused, the warden wandered around, looking for his friend. That was when he spotted him, talking to another player. They appeared to be whispering about something, but even with his incredible hearing, he couldn't make out what they were saying. Adam noticed the warden and quickly motioned the other player away before rejoining him. You slayed the metal monster, did you? Great job. I've got a special treat for you. Meet me in the forest clearing tonight for your reward. He then walked off, leaving the blood warden on his own. Hours passed, and once it was dark, the warden walked into the middle of the clearing. However, there was no one around. Where was Adam? All of a sudden, the ground gave out underneath him, and he fell into a large pit. Players then immediately surrounded and stood above the hole. Hey, finally, we've caught the thing. Adam's right. He's too powerful to keep around. Let's just kill him and get this over with. The Blood Warden couldn't believe his ears. Adam, his only friend, had betrayed him? For months, he had been able to keep his bloody rage under control, knowing that he had at least one friend in this world. But now, he had no one he could trust. The burning anger he felt quickly reached a boiling point. Suddenly, unimaginable amounts of blood began to pour out of the enraged warden. This caused the base of the pit to fill, and it wasn't stopping. As this was happening, the moon turned red, bathing the landscape in a crimson light. The blood continued to pour and pour, slowly raising the warden up as the players watched in absolute horror. There was eventually so much blood that it leaked over the edges of the pit and began to spread everywhere. Now lost to his rage, the warden began slaughtering every single player in the clearing, looking for the one who had betrayed his trust. Unable to find Adam, the warden roared. Over the following days, the Blood Warden's fury never ceased. It didn't matter the mob, good or evil, they would all be destroyed just the same. One day, after slaying a group of pigs, the Warden turned to look at the now blood-soaked river and was hit by a memory. He remembered the witch and her pool of blood. That was the source of all his pain and anger. I'll kill that witch for cursing me. The Blood Warden ran off back in the direction of his original home to put an end to this once and for all. Upon reaching the witch's lair, the blood warden roared out for her. The witch wandered out of her home and stared at the warden. So you finally decided to return to me. I will end you for what you've done unless you reverse this curse. The witch laughed out as if amused <laughs> by his demand. Silly warden, there is no escape from your curse. Not even death can save you. The blood warden reeled back in shock. Would he be stuck this way forever? Thank you for coming all this way though, dearie. It will make controlling you a whole lot easier. While she said this, she pulled out a potion and threw it on the warden. He struggled as he felt his mind clouding. He could hear the whispers of the witch taking over his thoughts. In a last effort to regain control, he started flailing around wildly. As he did this, he caught the witch off guard and beat her back, knocking her into her own pool of blood. The witch screamed as she slowly sank down into the dark red substance. The blood warden felt an incredible sense of joy in seeing her painful demise. However, killing the witch would not satisfy this warden's craving for vengeance. It only strengthened it. As more time passed, the Blood Warden would continue to scour the world for anything to kill. Though more than anything, he had begun to hate players the most after Adam's betrayal. 
Anytime he got wind of a new player camp or village, he would immediately arrive to tear it down and kill every player in sight. As his hunts increased, so did the blood moons. No matter how many attempts to slay the beast, none would leave with their lives. Eventually, the warden would catch up with Adam. Ah, hello, old friend. I've been searching everywhere for you. Finally, we could be together again. The warden slayed the player without a second thought. He knew Adam was a liar, and there was no going back now. The world was nothing but cruel, so he was going to be cruel too. He absorbed what was left of Adam. He didn't need anyone. From now on, he would only look out for himself. After killing Adam, the Blood Warden's attacks slowly became less and less frequent. It is said, however, that he can still be found wandering through Minecraft to this day. If you're hoping to catch a glimpse of this horror, the Blood Moon will rise, the rivers will run red, and the Skulk will change color, signifying that he is on the hunt. No one has yet to see him and live. Will you be the first?